I'm Andrew, and today I'll be demonstrating a SBOM generation tool from Cyclone DX that you can insert as a plugin for Java Maven projects. And with that said, let's get started. Of course, this tool is compatible with Linux and Mac as well. So first we're going to open the POM XML because that's what we're going to need to import the tool. So before using the tool, just all we need to do to import it is to include the following plugin to the POM of your project. And that's specifically this plugin. If you do not have this plugin, then your tool won't work at all. So be sure to include this plugin within your POM XML within the build tag, because if you, once again, if you don't have it, it will not work. And like I said, that's pretty much all you need to get it running. So once you have that all set up, just go to the project directory. I'm already in Duo Samples, so I'm just gonna go to the API and then just run the following command. That's maven install. And then at the end, just cyclone dx make aggregate bomb. And so while this is running, what this does is that this will build the project just like a normal Maven install. But after building, it will now go through all dependencies being used in the build and then make an SBOM out of that collection of dependencies. So now that we're done, we can see what we have. These two are from a different tool. What we'll need from the outputs is actually in the target directory. By default, all the bombs generated from this tool will be in the target directory. And so here we see is two S bombs actually, one in JSON format and one in XML. We're just going to be looking at the JSON formatted one. And so here's the S bomb that was generated. At the top, we can see information about the tool that we just used, such as name, version, serial number of the project, along with timestamp of when we used it. And then near at the bottom, we have the list of components within the project. This is essentially what I like to call pretty much the materials part of the bill of materials. Each component contains information such as publisher, group, name, version, description, scope. These top five are pretty much self-explanatory. Scope, this is pretty much by definition the scope of how the, comp the component is used in the project. It has three different values, either required, optional, or excluded. By default, if the tool notices it, it'll fill out as required by default. You can obviously change it to optional or excluded. And then below is hashes. And so all these values listed for hashes are simply just the file hashes that the component uses. Typically, there will be more than one hash algorithm included, depending on how big the library is. And along with that, you'll see that each hash has a content part. This is simply just a hash code used to, or essentially generated from each hash, hash algorithm. So below that, we have additional information as well, such as licenses, the unique package URL for that component or library. And along with that, we have external references. External references is essentially additional resources for documentation. Most components will be provided from this tool, typically a website or an issue tracker site from GitHub. That is the case if the repo is public, you'll typically see some GitHub URLs. And on top of that, you'll also see typically like a distribution URL. So it's not just basic documentation on how the tool is used, but it's also references for invest terms, pretty much constant updates or continuous updates on that tool as well. Such as issue tracking, for example, some of the cases could be vulnerability tracking or, or bug fixes or such cases. Then below we have the type of the components. This is typically library and then the bomb reference. This is pretty much the unique ID given to the component from the tool to pretty much make it unique from all of the components in the SBOM. So this tool, in my opinion, is best used for keeping Java Maven project dependencies in track. Each dependency listed does include specific information about versions, licenses, what they do, etc. 
the SBOM will also provide external references for some dependencies, which provide additional documentation and other information on how that component is doing in regards to bugs and vulnerabilities as well. Key thing to note is that none of the info from this SBOM will directly inform you whether or not a dependency has a critical vulnerability, such that, let's say I have a vulnerable component in my project, such as an outdated version of Log4j, the tool won't specifically notice that that component is vulnerable. So if it was a case where you want to use SBOMs for security and vulnerability analysis, it's recommended that you take the generated SBOM and apply it to a security manager software that can do the additional vulnerability scans for you. And so overall, this tool is very helpful in making SBOMs for major projects in a timely manner. I do think this tool fits very well within the development lifecycle. And I think that's why it was built like this in the first time, because it, as you just saw, it pretty much took like less than a minute to set up. Other applications you need to, you know, install a program and figure out how to use it and then run that for every sub project possibly, which is, you know, a lot more time consuming and essentially almost a waste of time. And for this tool, you can generate a new SBOM for every time you compile a new build. So it definitely does fit very well in the development environment. Thank you for checking out this video. If you really liked it, be sure to check out our other videos right here. And then you can also subscribe right up top here. And again, thank you. Bye-bye.